Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I thought we'd make a fun card using some products from Hero Arts. We're going to be using the beautiful circle bold print pattern and also some of the ink pads from Hero Arts as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is that beautiful pattern we're going to be using today. This is a 6x6 six six cling stamp from Hero Arts and it's called the Circle Pattern Bold Prints Design. To do our stamping, we're going to use a Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. And I'm also going to be using the Hero Hues Sampler Paper Pack. And in this, you get a variety of colors. It makes it really easy to choose your matte background. And I'm going to select the black in this case, but you can see all the beautiful colors you have here. So I'm going to use that black, and I'm also going to use a piece of the white Bristol Smooth cardstock as well. Now from these dies, I'm going to grab that second and third largest rectangle dies. And these are from the Hero Arts Infinity die set. So I'm going to use that second largest one with the black and the third largest one with the white cardstock. And again, these are the nested frame cuts rectangle dies. So you'll see I went ahead and die cut those and that white fits nicely inside the black. So that'll frame that white cardstock really well. I've gone ahead and placed my stamp in my Misty. This is the uh, Hero Arts My Sweet Petunia Memory Misty. So this is a 12 by 12 stamp positioner. So it's really great for these large images. So I've gone ahead and I removed that black foam pad because we are using a thick rubber cling stamp. I've placed my paper in the positioner. I'm going to put some anti-static powder down and then I'm just using a little bit of my Tombow tape here just to position that in place while I do my stamping. So for ink I'm using the Hero Hues Unicorn Pigment Ink. So this is just a bright white pigment ink and I'm going to ink that up really well. I want to make sure I have a nice coating of that all around the back of my stamp. And then I'm going to press this down. I'm just using my towel just to Press it out, get a nice even stamping here. And then I'll remove this from the positioner. And you can see there that it makes a beautiful image. So now I'm going to use my Ranger embossing powder. This is the super fine detail white. I'm going to sprinkle that on all over. And then you just want to tap away any excess. Now I'm using my heat tool. I'm going to heat set that. And you want to make sure that it looks shiny. If it's all shiny across the top, you know that you completely embossed it. If you see any dull spots, you do want to go back and give that a little bit more of a heat set. Now for inks today, I'm going to be using these beautiful Hero Hues ink pads. I'm using Key Lime Fizz, and I'm just going to place a little bit of the color on my mat here. I'm also using Fruit Punch. And these colors are just gorgeous. This is Pool Party. Lemon Drop. And Berry Smoothie. That sounds good. So I'm going to go ahead and take these and spritz these with just a little bit of water from my Tim Holtz Distress Sprayer. I'm just going to set these off to the side just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm giving those a little bit of spritz with the water and then I'm also going to be using a water brush so that I can add a little bit more water if I need to. What I want to do is start off by making sure my water brush is flowing nicely. So I'm just going to squeeze that onto a dry paper towel here and get a little bit more water than I normally would want. I want to fill in this circle with the water. So that when I drop down the color, it'll just kind of spread on its own. It'll just kind of go into those little areas in between the embossing and kind of fill in. I do want to just get a nice watercolor look here. So to start off, I'm just going to fill it in and just see how that looks. And then I'm going to be adding a little bit more color as we go along. So here I'm going to grab a little bit more of the color 
and I want to highlight some different areas and I want to make sure it's just random. I don't want to do every other line, although you certainly could. I just kind of want to have a random look. And if you feel like you have a little bit too much ink or if there's too much ink sitting up on top of your embossing powder, just take a dry paper towel and you can blot that away. And then you can come back in and continue highlighting and shading those areas that you want to give a little bit more color to. So you can always remove ink, again, just by blotting it with a paper towel. So it's very forgiving. This is really fun to do. If you don't love coloring, this you'll love this because it's there's no right or wrong. Just a matter of filling it in. So add your water first, then just start filling that color in. And again, you can blot away any excess if you need to. And there you see that I'm just blotting it off the top of the embossing there. And then I'm just going to go in between those lines and add a little bit more of a shadow here. So I'm just going to clean off my brush a little bit here to change colors rather than squeezing all the water out of the barrel of the brush, which you certainly could do. So I just dipped it in some water there, and I apologize, my water just looks so dirty there, but I was too lazy to get up and get some clean water. So all I was doing there was just cleaning off the tip of the brush a little bit, and then I'm going on to the next color. So as far as these inks go, these are the Hero Hues Reactive Inks. And what that means is these inks are a combination of a dye and a pigment ink, which is going to allow them to react to water. So these inks blend really well. So they're very smooth and easy to blend your colors together. So if you were to do an entire background of blending, then what you would do is you could spritz it with a little bit of water and blot that up with a dry paper towel and you'll get this beautiful spattered effect. So it's really nice to do these kind of uh, techniques. Now here you, I'm using it, I'm applying the water first, but you can see because it is a, a dye ink as well as pigment ink, it is allowing me to move that ink color around really easily. Now this ink is also acid free and fade resistant. So it does have those nice properties to it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna continue filling this in. I thought I would leave this in just so you could see what I did and how these colors blend so easily. And it is kind of fun to watch. And again, if you're not into coloring, this is so simple. You will love this. There's no right or wrong. Anything goes here. So just have fun with this and relax and enjoy it. So I'll catch you on the other side of this. So now we pretty much have this background completely done. Now the paper is quite wet at this point because we've added so much water. So what I wanna do is just grab my heat tool and just simply heat set this quickly. And you could do some heating from the back of the paper as well. Now I'm using my white gesso from Studio 71 and I'm just gonna apply a little bit to my glass media mat. I'm spritzing it with a little bit of water from my Distress Sprayer and I'm gonna spatter this. I just thought that would add just a little bit more texture to this, and I'm keeping the white a little bit thick on the thicker side because I want it to have some texture to it. And you can kinda of see that up close there. 
So it just adds a little bit more interest. Now you could again just spatter it with water because remember it has that reactive property to water as well. So I've got a standard A2 size top folding card here which measures four and a quarter by five and a half. And I just use my bone folder to press out that crease really well. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue this black cardstock onto my card base and I'm using the Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. And this goes on white and dries clear and I'm putting plenty on the back of this. And I'm just using the glue here just to give me a little time to move this around. I wanna make sure it's centered really nicely because we are gonna be adding another layer. Now to press this out, I'm using my We Are Memory Keepers bone folder. This is a bone folder, but I use it a lot just to press things in place. Got a nice smooth edge on it, so it makes it really easy to spread things out or just to position them down. Now I'm gonna put glue on the back of this panel as well. I won't use the bone folder here because I do have embossing on this panel and that paint that's raised up a little bit. So I'm just gonna use my fingers here and press that in place. So now you can see we have that layered. Now I'm going to be using the word hello from the Hello Stamp and Cut set from Hero Arts. And then I'm going to be using that sentiment, just saying, and I placed it on an acrylic block. And that's from the Layered Topiary Stamp and Cut set. And the last one I'm going to be using is this little oval die. And you can see you get some really cute images on here from the Stamp and Cut Handmade Tags set. So I've got all three of those ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and die cut the hello. And I've got that black cardstock. And this is a 100 pound cardstock and I'm running it through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. I've die cut four of those. And I want to stack these up. So I'm gonna be using my Xyron. This is the one and a half inch Xyron and this is the Teresa Collins uh, unit. But I'm going to place all of these in here, and this is going to add adhesive to the back of all of these sentiments. So you just want to slide them in one at a time, make sure they're not overlapping. And then there's a little place there to just tear that off. And then to make sure these are completely, that the adhesive gets stuck down, I'm just using my Sizzix sculpting tool just to press down in between those letters and those little open areas, just to make sure the adhesive doesn't pull up in those areas when I go to remove the backing here. So just press it down firmly with your fingers as well, and then peel off that top sticky layer. Now that leaves the adhesive on the back of each of these images. And what I'm gonna do is just peel them off one at a time. But you can see when I do that, I still have some of that sticky that peels up with it. So I'm just using my pick tool from Tim Holtz and I'm just gonna move that adhesive, just push it towards the back there. And we'll also remove a little bit of that later on with our adhesive uh, gummy eraser. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach all of these together. So I'm just stacking them up. I'm lining them up carefully here. And this makes it really easy to adhere these together. Now you could certainly use your Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive here as well. I just thought this would be easier just to stack these up with the sticky back here and not deal with the glue. But either way works just as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and stack up all four of those and that's gonna give us a nice thick embellishment. So I went ahead and attached all four of those together and now if there is any excess glue here, I'm just gonna use my adhesive remover. And for all of these products, I will list everything below. So it'll be listed below and it's also listed on my blog as well. So I'm gonna set that aside for now. Now I'm gonna take that little oval die. We're gonna go ahead and stamp our sentiment using the VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. And I'm stamping that on some Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. I'm gonna take that oval die and I'm just gonna tape that in place with some uh, purple tape. I wanna make sure that tape is on the outer edges of that die because we're gonna be doing some, using a pen to do some stitch work here. So I'm gonna leave that just the way it is. And now I'm gonna take my Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. 
This is the 0.1 millimeter, and I'm going to go all around this and create kind of a stitched border. And I'm using that metal frame of the die to follow. So I'm just going right up against that metal edge, and that's going to give me a nice even stitching all the way around. So this is kind of a good little way to cheat and make your stitching look perfect every time. So now I can go ahead and remove that die, and you can see that I have that beautiful stitching now, which really frames it. And now I'm just adding a couple little hash marks there, and you can see what that looks like up close. And now I'm going to go ahead and attach this to, to my card. So I'm using some Scotch foam mounting tape, and I'm just going to cut some small pieces of this and make sure I have enough on there to keep this nicely popped up. I'm removing the backing from my tape and I'm going to place this down in the lower right hand corner of my card here. We're going to be placing that hello sentiment just above it. And that sentiment already has kind of a curve to it so it's going to fit perfectly right above this, this oval uh, sentiment here. So you can see that it goes right around it just perfectly. So now I have that sticky back on it and I'm going to go ahead and place that down. Now using my Jelly Roll white gel pen, I'm going to add some highlights to my letters. Because you know I just can't leave them alone so I always have to come in and add a little something here. You could add some little polka dots as well but I just thought I'd add some little highlights and you can see that up close. Now I wanted to add one more little embellishment and these are the HAI Supply. These are little uh, Fimo flowers and they come in a multitude of colors here. And this is the Colorful Blossom set. And these are so pretty. I use these a lot just when I need a little pop of color and a little bit of dimension. So I'm just going to add one here to that hello. And the hardest part was deciding which color to use because there was a, there were a lot of colors that I thought went really well. You can see, I'll show you some of the colors here. There's that beautiful lavender. There's the green, kind of that mint green, and a beautiful yellow as well. So I did decide to go with the pink because pink is my favorite color. So I'm going to pop that on here. And again, that just adds a little bit more interest to your card because otherwise it's a fairly simple card. And you can see that up close. Even though it wasn't difficult, we have a lot of dimension and a lot of interest on the card. I wanted to also show you that I decided to do this in a second set of colors here. And, and here I used the mint green flower because I thought that just looked really pretty with these colors. And for ink pads on this one, I used the blue Hawaii, the grape slush, and the blue raspberry. And I just think all of these colors are so gorgeous. So those are the two cards for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.